Oh, hello again, everybody. I bought myself a selfie stick, which uh, upset Nicky a little bit. I've also just had a chalk ice and I spilt some of it down my shirt. Yeah. Have a look here, look. Uh, that's a bit of chalk ice. It's not poo, honestly. Well, anyway, that's not the point. The point is that uh, I've got a bit of a squealing noise coming from the belts on the van engine. I've got an idea what that is. Um, I'll show you. Well, the first thing as usual in anything like this is to take the spare wheel out because we won't see anything with that in the way. And of course, in order to get the tyre out, we have to remove the leisure battery. And we'll also disconnect the main battery as well, just because we're tinkering around in amongst the innards. And with that all out of the way, um, we then need to uh, cut these two cable tyres so we can take off the uh, hoses and release this cover that covers over the belts. I found these little cutters while I was working up in a roof um, a few years back. Um, they're jolly handy. Of course, uh, as always, Mr. Ginge is uh, here helping me. Always uh, there with a bit of helpful advice. So yeah, let's just now separate out. Pull that off there. And this one off the other side. Now for some weird reason, this hose looks like it's full of water. Now this is an air hose, so uh, that's not right, is it? Um, let's get that off and see what's going on. Okay, so have a look at this. This is what's been going on. Um, this is obviously the water pump and uh, in trying to take off that rubber hose I've dislodged this little plastic cap and uh, as you can see, take that off, coolant comes out. Um, I'm not sure that's supposed to do that. Um, that looks to me like a little air bleeding type nipple that should be sealed up. Um, so we might have to do something about that. I'm going to have to squirt maybe a load of plus gas in there, dry that off, squirt a load of plus gas in there and see if I can tighten that up. I suspect I may not be able to, that may have... I'm not sure what's going on there. Anyway, we'll have a look at that. Right, so, so the, the squealing belt, I think as you can see, is this sort of arrangement. So, this tensioner here, this, this skinny little belt here, this I think is supposed to be a double belt type arrangement. Someone's put the wrong belt on there. There's our alternator belt. Um, and this is supposed to be like a double belt. But uh, yeah, this isn't the right one, I'm sure, because uh, that, that's so skinny, that's just gonna skid straight off there. These two belts, I think, should be the same. So, I need to get that off and see if I can find a suitable replacement. Right, so interestingly, this uh, bleed nipple uh, moves easy enough, um, but uh, we can't tighten it up enough to uh, stop the coolant coming out. That's really weird. I must have been driving the van for quite some time with just that cap stopping the coolant coming out. What is going on here? Um, anyway, I guess the thing to do, we're going to have to get some tube to put on there to try and collect the coolant. And because we don't want it just to go all over the uh, road because it's quite nasty for pets and such. So uh, let's see if we can find some tube, collect that coolant, drain it down to that point and then take that bleed nipple out and see what's going on. Right, so in the meantime, while that's draining out, let's uh, get these belts off and have a look at them. First thing we need to do is to slacken off this belt here, which we can do on the adjuster below. Yeah, seem to be uh, moving in underneath the van here, spending rather a lot of time here. Okay, well, as you can see, it's uh, relatively easy. Relatively easy. You can get your... Uh, socket on it, it's relatively easy, there we go. Relatively easy to uh, take the tension off this. Just need to undo that. 
adjuster there and then that's fairly slack and then undo that nut can you see it maybe you can see it yeah that nut up there just need to undo then we can swing that out of the way yeah, so that gets us our first belt off that's in the way of taking these others off and in the meantime our flow's dried up out of this uh, bleed nipple so we can take that out and have a look at it and see what's wrong there oh well um i don't know does this look okay to you um i guess the first thing to do is we'll, we'll clean it all up um so there is a little hole there um so I guess it seats on that, but there's still a hole there, so I'm not sure what's supposed to happen there. Um, but I'll clean it all up, put it back together. I'll clean out the, uh, the socket in the top of the pump as well, there. And uh, we'll see if it holds water, I suppose. Hmm, well I've put it back in and tightened it up and uh, topped the reservoir back up with water, but I'm still getting this and uh, I don't think that's right, is it? Oh well, while we think on that a bit, uh, I'll get these other belts off. And that just means uh, slacking off this and this to release the tension on this. And then we should be able to get those uh, belts off nice and easy. Now, well, of course, it's not actually that easy because um, you can't get this belt past this bit of the gearbox so it looks to me as if I have to take this whole pulley off to change the belts ah oh dear okay so I'm hoping we can uh, get the pulley off just by taking off these 10 mil screws and sliding it over the uh, nut looks like that's uh, what's supposed to happen so there we go those six bolts go through this ring which holds that pulley on now we should just be able to pull this pulley off, can't we? I think we can, splendid. So there we go, nice pulley. And you can see it's uh, definitely supposed to take two belts pretty much the same size. So there we go, these are the belts that were on there. I've managed to get them off now. Um, this is obviously pretty much the right belt. And this is just something that somebody has thought was a a good idea to stick on there but it just kept skidding off that tensioner because uh, it's so skinny and no good at all really it started to crack as well so this is an 815 mil belt by the look of what's marked on it trouble is that uh, I don't know my watch has stopped but uh, I'm guessing it's maybe at least half three four o'clock on a Saturday afternoon it's only going to be Halfords that's open so fingers crossed they can match these up before we do that though, I'm going to have one more go at uh, this bleed screw. I'm going to uh, see if I can clean out the seat of it with a, a bit of a cotton wool bud. So uh, I'm going to take this out again. There you go. These come with a, uh, a warning on the packet not to uh, stick them into your ear canal. But uh, no mention of water pump, so we should be fine. You know how much good this is going to do, but uh, worth a shot. Also going to uh, run some emery around the end of this uh, bleed screw. Um, I don't think that can do any harm. Certainly can't make it worse than it is, can it? Well, that didn't work, did it? Oh well, um, off to Halfords to see if they've got a couple of these um, camshaft water pump belts. Oh well, would you believe not only did Halfords not have the right belt, they didn't have any belts. Apparently Halfords don't sell drive belts, so there you go. <laughs> I don't want to say to that. I suppose I'll have to order some online and we won't be able to finish the job today, sadly. Um, did pick up some metal putty just in case I have to block off that bleed screw if I can't find a replacement. I think that would probably do as a at least a temporary repair. Oh well, back home I suppose. See what's for dinner. Well, I've had a bit of a think about it overnight and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that bleed screw out and 
put some chemical metal in there with uh, maybe a self-tapping screw if we can find one that fits just to block it up because uh, there's obviously something amiss there. I couldn't really find anywhere that sells just spare bleed screws but a whole new water pump is not too bad so it might be worth getting one of those in just to keep in the van as a spare in case we have a problem when we're away somewhere so that's uh, also something to think about. Well I've looked about and I don't really have any tiny self tappers small enough to uh, go in there and not stick out massively so I think probably just uh, the, the chemical weld itself should be enough to block that up. We'll give it a try. Now, I've checked with uh, Mr Ginge and he thinks that should work okay, don't you Mr Ginge? Yeah, good. So here it is, there's my repair, or my filling in anyway. So we have to give that about an hour and then we'll put it back in and top the system back up with coolant I guess. Okay, well, uh, looks like that's uh, set nicely. Let's get it back in the water pump. And I have put a, a little bit of PTFE tape on for uh, good measure. Okay, well, that's now down in there as far as that really wants to sit. So I'm going to put some plain water in and just see if we get any leaks. I'll have a bit of a dry up around it first, I think, just so I can tell a bit better. Well, splendid. Um, Put a fair bit of water in there and yeah, no sign of any little fountains anymore. So uh, hopefully that's done the trick. I've got some more antifreeze to put in. This is uh, pre-mixed stuff I just picked up from uh, the Tesco's filling station. As you probably know, you can't mix any old antifreeze with any other old antifreeze, but this one does clearly say on it, add to any coolant slash antifreeze. So, this should be okay to mix in with the stuff that's already in there, which came from Halfords. Because Halfords do actually still sell antifreeze. So there we go, I've, I've topped this up. It's quite an old plastic vessel, you can't really see through it very well, so you have to dip your finger in to uh, find the level. Well, that's what I do anyway. And uh, just in case you didn't know, this little uh, thing here is just to bleed off the uh, the little heater matrix inside to make sure we don't get an airlock there. Now I've left the heater controls where they were and um, I've not run the engine so I'm hoping there's no air got in there but we may have to bleed that later on depending on how we get on. But once we put the belts back on the engine we'll run it up for a little while and check the level in there just to make sure that everything's fine. Well there we go, uh, can't really do much more on the uh, fixing the motorhome now until I get the belts that I've ordered through the post. So that'll be later on in the week. It's Wednesday and uh, my belts have arrived from Coastal Motorhomes. Uh, they seem to be the people for this sort of thing so uh, I'll put a link in the description below to their website. Well, these are the belts we need for our water pump, these two 825 belts. Well, I tell you, well, I've wrapped these two belts around the pulley and now the next thing is to reinstall the pulley back onto that spindle there. Well, that's all a bit fiddly and uh, then of course you've got to get this ring on and bolt it on. So uh, I'll do that next. Right, that's all the bolts on except one. Um, and that last one holds a little metal ring that goes around there. What its purpose is, I'm not entirely sure. Might just be to indicate if this is coming undone. Don't know really. But obviously having it there prevents you doing those up. So you want to do those up first and put that one in last, I guess. Now would you look at that, look. That washer's split and uh, come away. I wonder if I've got another washer that sort of size. Of course I have, look, I've got a lovely little selection box. I reckon one of those will do the trick. There we go, that's better isn't it? Now I've just got to get these belts sitting on properly and, and onto the tensioner. So once you've got these uh, belts in roughly the right place you can use a big uh, ring spanner to, to swing on this to bring the tension up and then uh, tighten up that nut there on the back to hold it all in the right tension. Excellent, so now it's just uh, this last belt um, to go on that does the uh, vacuum pump. 
Ah, so of course it's back underneath the van. And there's our lovely uh, vacuum pump with the, uh, the tensioner nut there to slacken off these. <clears throat> and this uh, one here as well to get the, uh, the pump to move so you can tension the belt and then uh, obviously you have to nip this back up again once you've got the right tension. I love these uh, ratcheting spanners, we really must get some, uh, some more of them, they do make life really quite a lot easier. Well there we go, there's all the belts back on again. That's just a matter of putting the air intake all back together. There we go, that's the uh, air intake all put back together again. I'm going to put some cable ties around there, but uh, before I do, I'm just going to start the engine up just to make sure there's no general squealiness or leakiness. Hey! Ah, splendid stuff. I'll put the uh, leisure battery and the spare wheel back in. Oh, there we go. All back together again, ready for our next adventure. A cup of tea, Mr. Ginge. Well, that's all for now. If you enjoyed it, press like. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And ring the bell to be notified when we upload something new.